Welcome to episode 52 of Discovering Nagasaki from a Local. My name is Chad. In my weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. This week, Jack Garrett and Daniel Hazen were the only people to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for answering my challenging questions. The first question from last week was, how many honey buns did I bake in last week's vlog? The answer is 32 honey buns. The second question from last week was, how many antique muskets were hanging on the wall in the display case at Nagasaki's Museum of History and Culture? The answer is 10 muskets. Two days ago on July 23rd, the Summer Olympics got underway in Tokyo. Until August the 8th, more than 11,000 athletes will compete at 34 venues in and around Tokyo. All the best to this year's Olympic athletes. The 76th anniversary of Nagasaki's atomic bombing is just over two weeks away. Last July I started this weekly vlog series to commemorate the 75th anniversary and this episode will complete that year-long series. After this episode I will take a break from vlogging and later on this year I will be returning with a new vlog series about Japan. In today's vlog I will show you what our garden in Omura looks like now. I will also give you a short tour of two places in and around Omura, Arcadia in High Tech Park and Kori River in Kurogi Valley. Let's get started. Yesterday I managed to cut down all the weeds on this retaining wall. There were a lot of very sharp vines here smothering these pomegranate trees. For my wife and I, farming is more of a passion than a business. It never ceases to amaze us how quickly our good and bad foliage springs from the soil. Down here we have about eight bags of Nuka fertilizer next to the fence. In front of our house we only have a few trays of seedlings left to transplant. On these wicker baskets we are drying some plums in the sun. We will use them to make umeboshi, pickled plums. As you can see, our fig trees are producing a lot of fruit now. We are still harvesting our blueberries here, but the blackberry season is over now. We will get our first two lemons from this tree later this fall. This week I cleared out most of the weeds from our side garden. Here you can see our ashtaba. Green perilla. And jute. Over here you can see some of our bell peppers. Today I planted about 100 cucumber seedlings on both sides of this netting. I went a bit overboard on cable ties, but this trellis should stay straight and secure. This third crop of cucumbers will do much better in the shade next to our house. On the far left of our back garden we are growing cosmos, round okra with the large leaves, green perilla, and sweet potatoes. Here's the first pumpkin from our garden this year. Inside the vines we are growing red perilla. We'll use these leaves to make umeboshi with our dried plums. Over here we're growing some basil and cucumbers. We harvested about a hundred cucumbers from this patch so far and we'll use this last one here near the ground for next year's seeds. On the right we are growing green perilla, jute, cosmos, zucchini, and mini tomatoes. We've had a bumper crop of zucchini and tomatoes this year. Next to this concrete retaining wall we have some kiku imo, that tall plant. Ginger, green perilla, pumpkins, togan, 
Satuimo and a large crop of healthy crabgrass. Even though we don't use herbicides in this garden, our vegetables aren't being compromised by the weeds. I'll take you to the back of this garden now. Over here I'm growing half rows of carrots, as you can see here. String beans, soybeans, and pumpkins. I gave this area a haircut yesterday. After several weeks, I can finally see the cultivators and tractor again. Here are the okra. Jute, eggplants, and goya that I transplanted here three weeks ago. Here's the first goya of the season. In and around this trellis, we have a second crop of zucchini growing. Today, I transplanted several pumpkin seedlings here. Here's one of our sunflowers reaching for the sky. And nearby we have some mature eggplants and bell peppers growing. This is what our farm looks like from the top of our retaining wall. Fortunately, this year's crop of vegetables has remained healthy. To finish off today's farming B-roll, I'll show you what Hirata-san's rice field looks like. Hirata-san transplanted rice seedlings here back in episode 46. I'm now in front of Arcadia in Omura's high-tech park. This building is not far from Kotohira Sky Park, the place I showed you in episode 26, and Komatsu's factory in Omura. This is the reception lobby inside the main entrance. Although the first floor of this building originally had a large public computer facility and a restaurant overlooking Omura, they closed many years ago. Now most of the rooms on the first and second floor are rented out as office space for about 20 large and small businesses. This is a modern facility with a great view, but the steep road up here unfortunately limited its popularity. On my left is an atrium and on my right is Tsukishima Techno Maintenance Office. This large Tokyo-based company provides maintenance for large-scale water and sewage treatment facilities. This is where Arcadia's computer center used to be located. At the end of this corridor is a rental convention hall. And on the other side of this stairwell is a playroom for a local nursery school, Kashinoki Hoikuen. Most of the offices here are closed today because it's Saturday. The people who do work here on weekdays can take advantage of Arcadia's convenience store, elevator, and atrium. From here you can get a better view of the atrium below. On the second floor, you can see some of Arcadia's roof-mounted solar panels. More than likely, these panels came from the nearby Komatsu factory. Outside the Arcadia building, you can see a playground, rental equipment, and part of Arcadia's parking lot. Arcadia's original restaurant used to sit under that brown roof. Guests had a great view of Omura from inside. From this vantage point, you can clearly see Omura Bay and Nagasaki Airport in the distance. Behind me is a large pitch where visitors can relax, play catch, and ride around the path on the rental vehicles that are available here. Unicycles, pro scooters, trikes, and quads. I'm now on a country bridge above the Kori River in the Kurogi Valley. This is a popular place for local people who want to cool off in the water during the hot months of July and August. On my left is the road which leads to a large parking lot next to this wading and swimming park.
there are only 10 cars in this parking lot now, but it's usually filled on the weekends. The official Japanese name for this park is Kurisabo Koen. Next to this sign is a rather steep set of stone steps leading down to the river below. This is the view of the steps from below. There are a lot of large rocks along this river, but the water is generally shallow. That section on my far right, though, is about two meters deep. Dipping your head in there will certainly wake you up. There are a few people waiting in the cool water now and enjoying the shade in this natural setting. Further downstream you get a better view of the water cascading over these boulders. This river eventually leads to the reservoir next to Kaizi Dam. I showed you this dam way back in episode 3. Further on, the Kori River gradually widens and its current weakens. I'm now about 100 meters from the stairs I showed you earlier. Even though it's 31 degrees Celsius today, I can't help waiting in this water with my clogs. Nearby is a small waterfall where you can take a rather brisk shower. Downstream from the waterfall, the pools start to deepen to waist level. From here you can see this steep river bank and the dense forest which shades this watering hole. Here's a view of the deep pool from the other side of the river. There are no lifeguards here, but other than slippery rocks and the occasional horsefly, it's quite safe to wade and swim here. The shade and the fresh water make it a better choice than the sea or a pool in the summer. I want to sincerely thank all my subscribers and viewers for following me over the past 12 months. I really enjoyed creating this video tour of Nagasaki Prefecture, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to highlight some of its history culture, venues, art, cooking, baking, and farming. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. And you can watch all of my vlog episodes on my online YouTube playlist. Bye for now.